What if I told you I could get you bigger triceps in three weeks? How you say? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to super size and get that super crazy pump in your triceps that you've been missing out on. So follow me, we're gonna get this started right after this. Hey guys, Coach P here we are at the tricep pushdown. Now, I'm gonna do a high rep set. Actually, it's gonna be a high rep drop set and I'm using a weight for demonstration purposes. But what I want you to know is that you don't have to use just this bar. You could use a straight bar, you could use the triangle bar, you could use the rope. You pick your poison, as you've heard me say in previous videos. You pick the bar that suits you. I like doing the, the, the bent bar slightly. For me, it hits the tricep heads better. So what I'm gonna do is my first set, because like I say, the first set of every exercise, you have to blow your load. You've gotta get the maximum repetitions in to set the pace for the pump. So this set can be easily a 25 rep set or more until I feel that I've had enough and then I drop the weight and I drop set high reps Reps to failure, reps to failure, reps to failure. Demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do probably maybe 15 or 20. I'm gonna do a drop set or two and then move on to another exercise. So follow as I do this. And understand something, I'm not throwing weight. I'm controlling this weight. Each repetition, I squeeze the triceps at the bottom, at the finish, up to the chest about nipple height, and I go down and squeeze. Each repetition is a hard squeeze that helps bring the blood into the muscle. My elbows are tight to my body. I go up chest high and I push down and I squeeze every single repetition. That tricep has to be squeezed and that's gonna force the blood in there. Every repetition is controlled. And once I hit that magic number, I stop, I drop the weight just a little bit, and I get right back into it in reps to failure. Failure could be 10, it might be 20, it might be more than what you started the first set at. It doesn't matter, it's what failure is to you, where you cannot do anymore. And believe me, you're gonna know when you hit failure because your triceps are gonna be screaming. And once you hit that magic number of failure, you drop the weight again. And you get right back into it. Controlled, hard squeeze at the bottom until you hit that magic number where your body says, hey man, that's enough. I can't take it, this is killing me. Okay? Follow me over to the next exercise. The next exercise is I'm gonna do skull crushers, okay? The old school skull crushers with the cambered bar. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna grab a, I don't know, 30 pound bar. I'm gonna lay down. I press the bar up. The objective here, keep the elbows in tight. Lower the bar to the eyebrows, controlled. The last thing you wanna do is drop this bar and crack yourself in the head. I've seen it happen. It's no joke. Nice and controlled. And again, squeeze the tricep on the lockout. Engage the triceps while you're training. Just like this. Every single rep must count. This is not a speed race. This is not a game of how much weight you can use. Granted, everyone's strength levels are different. Some guys are stronger than others. You use the weight that you can handle to get those reps to failure. And once you reach that magic number of failure, you stop. 
Then you would go grab another bar, 10 pounds lighter, and you would continue doing reps to failure. And when you hit that magic number, you go grab another bar, reps to failure. Those are my key exercises. The one I just showed you, the push down, and this one right here. The next exercise is a dumbbell, I'm sorry, a dumbbell overhead lockout. That's another key exercise, single arm to isolate the triceps. So I'm gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna grab a dumbbell that I'm comfortable with. And that's gonna depend on how much of a pump you got. If you're lollygagging and, and you have a semi-pump, you're gonna be able to handle more weight. But if you're doing this the right way, with the right weight for those high reps that I keep talking about, with this being your last exercise, your triceps should be already fatigued to the point where you're almost, almost what you can't do anymore, okay? So I grab the dumbbell, I bring it over the top of my head, my elbow is straight up, and all I'm doing is going straight out. And I'm locking the tricep. Notice my shoulders are not engaged because I'm not training shoulders. All I'm doing is raising my elbow over my head. Now, if you have shoulder injuries, don't overdo it. Don't crank your shoulder farther back than your body's gonna allow. This is a comfortable spot for me. So, so I go up and down. And I do reps to failure. Just like this. Nice and controlled. It's not a race. I'm using the triceps to push this weight up. I'm not using body mechanics to jerk the weight up. Every repetition is controlled. That's how you know that you've engaged the muscle. When you start putting body mechanics into the movement, you've just taken the effect that you want off of the movement because you're not engaging the muscle. If the muscle's not engaged during the exercise, you're wasting your time. You're also putting yourself at risk for injury and that's the last thing you wanna do. You don't wanna get hurt in here because it can sideline you. You can tear a muscle, you can tear a tendon. Who the hell wants to deal with that? That'll keep you out of the gym for weeks and months. So, with that being said, if you follow the tips I've showed you with the exercises that I just demonstrated, I promise you, you're gonna get good results. You gotta stay focused, you gotta stay regimented. I'm a believer in drop sets, one body part a week. Now for arms, it would be bias, tries, and forearms. And the reason it's one body part a week because that muscle needs time to repair. If you start training every other day, your arms are gonna be sore, or just any muscle in particular is gonna be sore. You're not allowing it to recuperate. You have to let your muscles fully recuperate. Let's say, for example, you did chest on Monday. Let's say Friday's another chest day for you, and you go and tense your chest, and you're like, oh man, I'm still sore. Don't train chest. Your chest hasn't recovered, you're still sore. Give it another day. Your muscles only grow when they rest and they're recovered, not while they're sore. So I hope you guys learned something from this. I got a book out on Amazon, Untold Secrets of Bodybuilding, it's doing very good. Um, get yourself a copy. Again, it's available on Amazon. And I'm a product rep for Gene Pro Protein Powder. It's a veteran owned company. It is the best protein supplement that I've ever used. And I'm not saying it because I'm a product rep. I'm not getting paid to say this. I'm saying it because it's the truth. I'm a type two diabetic. I tried the product. It had no effect on my blood sugar. It actually dropped my blood sugar a few points after my workout. And I don't get that bloaty gassy feeling after I take it. So for me, it's a win-win situation. I've recommended it to a lot of people and I've gotten nothing but great positive responses from them about this product. So give it a try. Use Coach P in the discount. It'll give you a 15%
off your entire order. So that's my rant for today. Again, I hope you guys learned something. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys at the next workout. Have a good day. Peace out.